So when the saints, so when the saints go, my chin hit. Wow, this coffee is working double time today, baby. Hi, everybody. What's up? If you're new to my channel, my name is Chris Clemens, or a friend of my Clementines. Welcome back to the dysfunction that is my channel. It is Easter. Yes, Jesus, rise. <laughs> Buy my shirt. Buy my shirt. Buy my, Buy my hat. Buy it all. Get your f***ing ass up and join my Patreon. Oh, God. Yeah, no, fun fact, Jesus is a part of this little story time adventure extravaganza. So I was thinking about how I haven't done a story time on this channel in what I would consider a hot minute. So one of my best friends, Katya, is visiting, and I was asking her, because we have literally gone through every life experience together, I was like, what crazy story? Like, we've gotten into so much And then it hit me, like, 500 pounds of groceries that were delivered to a former job. I should talk about all the different jobs that I've had, because, oh my my god, I have lived 77 different lives. I know that you might think I'm a Nepo baby, to which I would say, thank you, my god, I wish. But I really have had pretty much every job under the sun, I feel. Today I'm here to open up to you about them. This is 60 Minutes. Chris tells all, colon, the victim comes forward. For those wondering, I am in fact wearing this gorgeous Middle Kid t-shirt. You can get your own at middlekid.supply and follow Middle Kid on Instagram. There may or may not be an exciting new little product that's coming this week. And also join my Patreon if you want. I've been posting a lot of content that I cannot post on here. There. So, there we go. That was a great sentence, Chris. So for some background, my parents were very much the kind to be like, yeah, that's cute, you want it, you have to get it. And I was like, no, for sure. Thank you for not having a trust fund for me. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure, but I think my first job is like, honestly, really sets the tone. My first job, I would say, was around the ripe old age of 14, because naturally that's smart for a 14 year old to be in charge of literally anything, question mark. I was a classroom aide at a Sunday school, CCD, if you know what I mean. But I was not only a classroom aide, I was in charge of looking after one of the students in the classroom who was autistic. Again, I just want to remind you that I was 14. I don't think at the time I had met an autistic person. I had just been confirmed and I guess they were like, well, yep, you are confirmed in the eyes of Jesus and in the pay books. Well, no, I didn't even get paid. Oh my god. Dude, free labor is a crazy concept. Like, looking back, I couldn't have even driven myself there, and I was in charge of another human being? That is insane to me. Like, the teacher was in charge of the class, and then I was this guy's buddy. Yeah, that was one of those moments where I was like, what am I doing? Oh my god, maybe that's where my imposter syndrome started. Because I was like, I don't th I, d I don't, I don't think, s I don't think this is right for me. I don't really remember too much from that, I just remember that that happened. That was like the first thing I remember. The rest of these aren't gonna be in any particular order. Another job I had was like the high school classic, babysitting. I loved that sh Mostly because up until like two years ago, I was acting like a kid, so I was getting paid to be a kid. I got paid to play Wii, I got paid to watch TV, I got paid to use the parents' DSLR camera that I could never afford. I got paid to have a snowball fight, like, oh my god, I loved babysitting. I was a babysitter for my college counselor and my English teacher. Both sets of kids were just so Fun. My English teacher had like a really nice Nikon DSLR and I was obviously interested in photography but never had like that nice of a camera. So she would like let me use it. I would go around like her garden and take like, you know, those like artistic butterfly shots. I did end up taking portraits of her kids which like really helped my babysitting career. They were telling all their friends like, oh, he took the most amazing portraits of my kids and I didn't even have to pay for him. And I was like, yeah, wait, that's an interesting... Hold up. My rates just went up. Then my college counselor's kids, we would, like, play capture the flag and, like, have snowball fights. Oh my god, it just was so much fun. Dude, babysitting was, like, the best gig. Oh my god, I loved babysitting. With my college counselor, one of her kids honestly could have probably watched her sibling. She was, like, doing most of the work that I should have been doing. She's like, oh, don't worry, I'll, like, cook the dinner. And I'm like, no, wait, what? What? Dude, the kids would go to bed, like, two hours after I got there, and then I would get paid to watch like MTV. <laughs> Sign me up! Oh my god. The next job that I remember and will probably never forget, it was the summer between freshman and sophomore year of college and I needed money because I was studying abroad in London the next semester. So pretty much everybody in my town knew that Chris was looking for a job. My neighbor who I've grown up with was like, hey, I work at this restaurant that's owned by like a local family. It's in their house. Would you want to work there? They need a dishwasher. I was like, okay, it's not ideal. It's not even 
close to ideal. But like, listen, money's money, honey. I will take it. Wow, that was maybe one of the greatest regrets of my life. To set the scene, the restaurant is like the first floor of this family house, and then like the second floor is like their actual family space. And then in the basement, there was like where we stored all the food, the frozen stuff, etc. Also some background, the guy who owned it was like 35, we'll call him Fred. He was the worst. There were like three older women, my neighbor who ran the cash register, and then Fred who like ran the company, which is a stretch. At this job, I really was like the bitch boy. I did pretty much every job at that restaurant. I felt so taken advantage of. On day literal one, I walk in and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to wash some dishes. I get there and the first task I'm given is to go downstairs and clean up the food storage area. Little did I realize that that meant getting rid of all the spider webs in the basement and getting rid of all of the moldy and grime covered boxes that I had never met before because it was my first day. Another fun fact about this task is that the basement did have four foot tall ceilings. So as I'm cleaning that up, the food supplier drops all the food off. I then have to carry that downstairs because I'm the only able-bodied person, I guess. So I'm carrying all the groceries down to the four foot tall ceiling basement and I hit my head on a pipe and immediately burst into tears. This job I could really go into detail with, and maybe I will on my podcast, on Angel's Chris Clemens, and get it wherever you listen to your podcast. And then I got promoted, but like with no extra pay and still had to do all my old jobs, to chicken fryer. And not only chicken fryer, but like chicken batterer and washer. Oh my god, I could literally throw up thinking about this. I just remember 4th of July being the worst day of my life. Every single person in my town ordered fried chicken that day, and not just like fried chicken, like 500 pieces of fried chicken. I just remember my hands being covered in chicken guts and like breading. Ugh. So foul. No pun intended. So that job just continuously kept going downhill. I ended up pulling my back out because I was once again the bitch boy of this restaurant. Even with a pulled back, they still made me carry shit. Also, I got yelled at for taking too much of the food for lunch. I literally got fat shamed for eating too much salad. It was salad! They're like, Chris, the servings you're making for yourself are too much. You know what's not too much? What I'm getting paid to run this shithole, okay? Ugh. I have to leave this topic now because I'm ready to take off. When I was a college student at NYU, I always worked like multiple jobs and did a full time of school and also did YouTube. Looking back, I don't know how I had that kind of work ethic because I can barely get out of bed by like 11 a.m. now. One of like the many side hustles I had was I worked at like the alumni phone center at NYU, which meant I had to basically call alumni who were all in severe student debt and asked them to donate to the college that gave them student debt. Do you know how brutal that job was? I actually met a lot of really fun people there and it wasn't as bad as it sounds. Every shift was three hours and I made like 10 bucks an hour. <laughs> I had like just started interviewing strangers on the street at that point. So like talking to strangers to me was really fun. But what wasn't fun is that like we had to do three mandatory asks. We would start with like $100 and then I have to be like, I understand that you can't do $100. Would you like to do 50? And then they'd be like, no, I said I don't want to give money. I am poor. And then I'd be like, well, how about just a minimum donation of $5 or something stupid like that? And then they would literally scream at me. But if I didn't do that, the manager would randomly be on the phone listening to make sure you did your three asks and like followed the script and everything. But like, bro, I'm a human being. Cause my ass in my anus. I was like 20 doing this job and I just was so ill-equipped to be facing that kind of verbal harassment from alumni. I mean, to be fair, they would be like, no, I'm literally in debt from college still. And I'd be like, no, I totally understand that. How about something much more doable, like $50? Like what? Fun fact though, one time I did call Adina Menzel. She didn't answer, but I did write down her phone number, which was so Super duper not allowed, but I lost the notebook, so it's like it never happened. Just like the dishwasher job I had, this next one is probably one that is on equal levels of trauma, if not more. I was an intern, shout out free labor, at Harper's Bazaar in the photo department. I remember getting this internship and like shitting myself. I was like, oh, I'm like Lauren Conrad. I'm working at a magazine. The person in charge of me there was like the photo director at Harper's Bazaar at the time, and she was a monster. I don't know what in the Devil Wears Prada th 
she thought she was doing, but it was so far out of line. I was there to help the photo department schedule shoots. I made mood boards and model boards, found locations and made like portfolios and did all of this stuff. So a lot of it was cool and I was doing fun stuff, but most of it was living in fear. My boss who we'll call like Luann basically had me doing everything but working in the photo department. I like went and fetched her lunches. She gave me her expenses to fill out her expense report. Hey, so, um, I did cheat my way through every math class I've ever been in. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm like inputting all these numbers into a corporate database. I was like, okay, I did them. She comes back. She's like nine feet tall and wore high heels. Like truly terrifying, a moving wall. She comes back and she goes, Chris. I go, yeah, what's up? What do you need, Luann? I just heard back and all of these expenses are done wrong. Yeah, babe. What the f do you think? Oh my god, I totally forgot that my internship started with me city biking to the Hearst building from the East Village on maybe one of the most humid days in August in New York City. On this bike ride to Harper's Bazaar, I can feel the sweat running down my back and dripping down my bowls. I am drenched in sweat. I check in with the front desk to like let me through the turnstile and the guy goes, you want a paper towel or two? <laughs> I literally am dabbing my head, my armpits. I get to Harper's Bazaar on my first day with the largest sweat stains everywhere. It was a real indication of what was to come, that is for sure. And then on my last day, they literally forgot it was my last day, and then they bought me like those sugar cookies from like CVS. At the end, I did have meetings with HR about Luann because I don't give a f Oh my god, I remember that like YouTube was starting to become a thing for me and Yahoo wanted me to host and interview celebrities on this tour they were doing. So I got hit up to interview g Easy and Charlie XCX and I was like, hey, I'm gonna have to miss like two days of internship for this really big opportunity. I remember she said like, I'll let you pick one and you're lucky I'm even letting you do that. I was like, bitch, I'm gonna quit. You can do your own expense report because you should be. Oh my god, it was so... Ugh. Like it was so cool and I had so much potential and was just so brutal for no reason. Ah, for no reason. Mm, for no reason. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you all about one more job, but if you want more, let me know and I'm happy to do another video to this because I truly once again had so many fucking jobs. However, the last one was also in college. I would take on any side mission that had to do with photography. So in the photo department, they would always be like, oh, someone is getting married and needs a photographer. Like, would you want to? And I was always like, no, 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 no. However, this one came along and I was like, sure, why not? It seems easy. It like was easy, but it was just insane. So this couple's getting married in New York and they were like, we need a photographer for one hour. We're paying $200 and that's all we'll need. I was like, okay, this seems too good to be true. Let's do it. So I meet them at their hotel just south of Central Park. It is like such a bougie hotel and I feel so out of place. So I go up to the suite to take like the wedding preparation pictures. And then um, that's when I realized that it was just the bride, the groom, and the officiant. Uh, I was also not only the photographer, but I was playing the role as witness. No, that's like literally true. I was the witness in this wedding. So wrong. Oh, also this wedding does take place on Easter and also 420. This was spring of sophomore year and I wasn't really like a smoker back then. I was like just getting into it. So like 420 didn't really mean that much to me. So the time comes for us to go to Central Park. I thought we were gonna go to like a rowboat house or like this beautiful rock. No, we literally, they find a random tree and they're like, yeah, this is cute here. They're like in mud. It, it just made, it was insane. As a sophomore in college who really has like little to no life experience, what the f is going on? I'm taking pictures, the lighting is awful because we're just in the sun. I'm looking at my watch and I'm like, okay, so we're definitely past an hour. Do I leave? Do I stay? I did stay and then I did charge them another hour, so I made $400 in two hours. I literally thought I was on like the Forbes 30 under 30 list. I thought that I was wealthy with $400 cash. After that, I immediately hit up a kid in my dorm and celebrated my first 420. Wasn't that beautiful? I don't know where those wedding pictures are, but they are on some sort of hard drive in this house. Oh, that is so weird. I was just like a witness of people I will never see again's wedding. I don't even know if they're still married. I would not be surprised. It was so awkward watching them get ready. They, I was like, do y'all know each other? I don't know. But now I'm just sitting on my couch talking to a camera. Jesus may be rising, but I need to lay down. This has been exhausting thinking about all of this. I cannot believe I did so much free work for what? A resume builder. Ooh. Also, I want to say to everybody who's got middle kid, thank you so much just for the support, the love, the excitement. I'm very excited for you guys to be getting your orders. They should be shipping out soon. Anyways, good night.